So I have found quite the series, as you can see here on screen, with a very distinct artwork, honestly. Like, I absolutely just love the color palette to this webtoon. So what is this? Well, this series is called Homesick, and I recently discovered this, as you can see. I just actually started reading this today. Like, I, I just... I decided to start on a limb. I saw this cover girl here, and I was like, huh, I like the, the colors and the tone of it and all that. I wonder how good this is. So I sat down, I started reading it, and I got up to chapter 11, and I really like what I have read so far. And if you're wondering how many chapters it has, apparently it has 77 chapters. It already has two seasons, technically. So there's quite a bit of content, as you can see here, to really just dive into this series. Now, um, before I kind of talk about my overall impressions of these chapters and stuff, what is this about? Well, I mean, as you can kind of clearly guess, there's obviously some supernatural going on. There is uh, some form of, like, just, like, apocalypse, so to speak, when you see an image like this. And, yeah, you would be correct in those assumptions. So, basically, in the first chapter, this chapter here... Our main female character, Rain, wakes up, and she meets this boy called Samuel. And this boy, she knows nothing about him, and he knows nothing about her, at least from the context of the chapters I've read. And pretty much, she ha has amnesia. She doesn't remember anything. And so, she is a blank slate with someone that just woke up on this roof holding a knife in her hand, like, right next to her, pretty much. So, clearly, whatever happened for her to have amnesia, it probably wasn't a good thing. For instance, like, her holding a knife just means, from what you can gather, she was wanting to protect herself. Like, she was wanting to protect herself from some entity that was wanting to harm her. And when, when you factor in the world that, you know, is revealed in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 and onward, to how there's just creatures walking around, that legitimately want to devour you and kill you, and then there's even creatures that can apparently infect you and turn you into this, you know, it's very clear why you would probably hold a knife around and all that. But still, the question is, is that apparently this apocalypse has been, like, happening for three months. Like, according to Chapter 1, you know, for three months now, the world's pretty much ended. And she's forgotten everything. And it's like, okay, so how did you survive these three months, wind up on this roof with a knife, and being completely okay? Now, as the story progresses, there is some hints at how this potentially happened, like, for instance, with this character right here, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the point of the matter is, is that you have these entities, these creatures that appear called mercs, that um, pretty much devour people. They eat people, like zombies or creatures. It, honestly, this very setup here with this story is very reminiscent of Sweet Home. If you have actually ever sat down and read Sweet Home, then you know just like the premise of this is a little bit similar. It's just like, you know, you're in this building and all that. You look down, you see the world has ended, wondering what's going on, how you can fix this and all that. There is some differences, but it does have that feeling or that vibe of Sweet Home. And if you enjoy that series, I do recommend this. This does have some similar feelings to that. But, um, anyways, getting into the actual characters. So, our main female character, there is a lot of mystery about her. She seems like she's a good person, but as things kind of unveil itself when we find out more, most likely she isn't fully a good person. Like, we have this entity right here. This entity is basically a merc, from my understanding, and it's a very similar entity as this. Now, what is this? Well, this is an infected individual that had, like, another being pretty much possess their mind, take over their body, and start to control them. It's not necessarily zombieism or anything like that, it's just like a being is literally using your body. However, this chapter does reveal that the old personality, the entity that used to inhabit the body, like the kid, for instance, is not gone. He still appears, actually. He's still there, conscious, alive, etc. So there is just a battle of two personalities within this body. It's just two people fighting for control. Sometimes the, you know, the monster, so to speak, can give over control to the regular person, and the regular person can give control over to the monster, and apparently they're able to communicate with each other through the mind, probably with something very similar to like this, which leads into what I want to talk about. It's very clear by these early chapters, our main female character, Rain, is probably an infected. It's already shown signs of it that, you know, she pretty much does seem to be mysterious and she has an entity that possessing her and is even capable of, like, controlling her to a certain degree. So it's very clear that she probably is. Now, 
What makes her circumstance different, we don't know. What we do know, though, is is that apparently these entities possess you and they offer you stuff or whatever. Like, they will give you something very reminiscent of Sweet Home, once again. And um, it pretty much implies that it will help you whatever you want, even if it is twisted to some degree. For instance, the kid wanted to be able to, you know, just help out and all that, find their mother and father. And this entity, this creature, obviously did that, devoured their own parents so it's pretty dark it, it gets really dark and i mean these just brief little images i've shown it's a it gets yeah it's a little bit of a dark story there's a lot of blood a lot of violence and a lot of death so to speak and it definitely fits the tone and vibe of what you would want from a like a, a series honestly that is coming close to halloween like if you're wanting a creepy series fully recommend this one definitely has those vibes now what's good i think what really does this series so well is the color palette like i really cannot express this enough at first glance it seems very plain and standard but when you really look at just the tone and atmosphere of what it is like giving you i like the the mystical vibe of it but also it's very ominous because just the color tone of the sky it's like bloodish kind of and it's like you know there's just death everywhere and also with the the purple hues and stuff and pink hues it makes it to where it's like uh you know it seems happy but it really isn't i don't know i just i love the way the colors are used within this story i absolutely adore stuff like that and to be fair purple is my favorite color i think i've t said this in the past some of you might be unaware of it and so i'm a little bit of a sucker for the color purple or violet so when i see like these colors being used a lot i love it especially if the shading of it is done really well especially in a darker setting and i think that the series does a very good job with its art design and just the colors and everything it's just so good but uh back onto the story though so pretty much our main female character she's potentially possessed and the reason why she's different is because this entity doesn't remember anything as well, which is very fascinating, because as I already established, you know, with this, you know, this character was possessed and had full memories, its own entity that wanted to do its own thing, and clearly doesn't care about, you know, the other personality, but this one does. He seems to actually care about Rain, even though we don't fully know anything about him, he says he doesn't know anything. You know, he has amnesia too, he woke up just like she did and knows nothing. Now he could be saying the truth, he could be lying, we don't really know, but it's very clear that there is an oddity between these two, and it's not necessarily the exact same thing as the other infected. So this does mean that there could be like a, you know, different case and points for infected that you know, actually could be good and help and all that. Or they can be evil. But we do know that one of the things that the infected need is to eat humans or eat meat. So if she is infected, that means that will eventually play a role. That she will probably have those hungers. She has head pains and frobbing and stuff. So it's very likely that could happen. Will it? We will see. But uh, yeah, Homesick overall, it's a legitimately good start to a story. I really like this, actually. Um, like I said, I got up to chapter 11 here I was reading, and I, I gotta admit, like, if you haven't started this and you have some time to read or kill, do so. Like, this is good. Like, seriously, really, I recommend it. Um, I wonder if, uh, you know, this offer has actually done anything else, because honestly, I, I really like the art style. It's super unique. I don't know. I, I can't get over just how unique the art style looks to me, because I'm just not used to the way these colors are done within a story. It definitely stands out amongst, like, the different, like, series I've read on Webtoon over the years. I don't know. I just, I appreciate it. But anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you are interested in Homesick and you want to read this series for yourself, I highly recommend you click that link in the description for this video. And if you do click on it, it does help me out a lot to keep it completely transparent. And I would greatly appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you everyone for watching the video. If you want to check out any other videos that I made, I'll have them somewhere up here, you know, on the top of the screen. You can click on that as well and navigate. But uh, be safe, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for the next video I make. Be safe, stay healthy. She be out.